Imagine you're out driving and you see something like this, a car that's been pulled off to the side of the road by a police officer. So when you see that scene, what assumption comes to your mind? Probably most of us look at that and we think, well, the driver did something wrong. The driver was speeding or driving erratically and so got pulled over. But then, imagine you drive by and you notice that one of the tires is flat. Or you see steam coming out of the front of the engine. Or maybe in the back of the car you see a really pregnant woman who's about to give birth. And suddenly you understand the situation differently. Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here. Glad to have you worshiping with us today. We make assumptions all day long. We get information. We process that information through our life experience. But then every once in a while we get another piece of the story. And it begins to change things. It begins to change our assumptions. And that's the essence of our story for today. We're in a series called Get Used to Different. We're following Jesus through the Gospel of Luke. And we're going to look at a story we started last week where a man is brought to Jesus who is paralyzed. And people make assumptions about this man and his paralysis and about God. And Jesus uses that moment to change assumptions, to change the story, and what happens in that story can change your life as well. So we worship together today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I want you to put your imagination caps on once again and imagine that you begin to notice something isn't quite right with your body. It starts with your leg. Every once in a while, you seem to lose control of your leg. It doesn't happen a lot, but it's never happened before. And you start to get a little nervous. But then other strange things begin to happen. You lose control of your arm once in a while. Your hand freezes up on you. And so you seek out a doctor. They run a battery of tests, and they come back, and they say to you, yes, something is wrong. We just don't know what it is. You head back home, the days, the weeks, things get worse. Your quality of life is impacted, and you're nervous, you're scared. And now your body has completely shut down on you. It doesn't do what your brain tells it to do. You have to depend on other people to care for you, to feed you, to get you dressed, to get you places, and you're scared to death. But then there's a glimmer of hope. You hear about a specialist who has this remarkable ability to diagnose the undiagnosable and to fix the unfixable. The problem is, it's impossible to get into her. But you've got some friends who care about you. They're committed to you, and every day they're calling that specialist. And finally, there's a cancellation, and they're able to squeeze you in, but you got to get there soon. And so your friends pack you up. They fly with you to this appointment. And when you get into this specialist's office, she pulls a chair up, and she sits down in front of you. She doesn't have your file. She doesn't ask you any question. She just looks you in the eyes, and she said, friend, your sins are forgiven you. So imagine what you would feel in that moment. Your body is shut down. You're desperate for someone to fix it. And she has the audacity to say to you, your sins are forgiven. Well, in Luke chapter 5, there's a story we started last week about four men who are committed to their friend. Their friend is paralyzed. And they've heard rumors about Jesus, that Jesus can heal, and so they carry their paralyzed friend on a mat to Jesus. The problem is, when they get to Jesus, they actually can't get to Jesus. Because there are so many people around. Uh, Jesus is preaching in a house. It's packed inside, outside. And so the men decide to do something crazy. They carry their paralyzed friend up a very narrow set of stairs on the side of the house. And they dig a hole into the roof. And then they lower the man down to where Jesus is. And then those men probably put their heads into that hole to listen for the words that they were longing to hear for their friend. They wanted to hear Jesus say, get up and walk, you're healed. But that's not what they heard, because that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said to the man, friend, your sins are forgiven you. Now, it would be easy to assume that at that moment, the friends and that paralyzed man were shocked. They were Angry, frustrated, because that's not why they had come. It was obvious. This man was paralyzed. He'd come to be healed. And Jesus says to him, friend, your sins are forgiven you. And yet back in those days, those words were radical words of hope. Because back in Jesus' day, the assumption was that sin and suffering were tied at the hip. So if someone was sick... If someone was suffering, if someone was poor, if someone like this man was paralyzed, then that person must have sinned. So just as we see a car pulled off on the side of the road and assume that the driver did something wrong, so the people looked at this paralyzed man and thought, man, this guy committed a whopper of a sin to be paralyzed like that. And Jesus seems to buy into that assumption because he says your sins are forgiven. But as is often the case with Jesus, he's up to something radically different, and we don't want to miss it. Jesus does not believe that sin and suffering are tied at the hip. He doesn't believe that sin causes suffering, and he separates those two over and over again during his ministry. But in that moment, he understands that that's where that man's thinking is. That's where the friend's thinking is. That's where the crowd's thinking is. You see, that man believes he's paralyzed because he's committed some kind of sin, and until his sins are forgiven, he'll never be able to walk again. 
And Jesus understands that. So Jesus starts with the man's assumption. And then he turns that assumption on his head and gives the man the rest of the story. And so by forgiving that man's sin, essentially what Jesus was saying to the man, you have never been the object of God's wrath. You have never been the object of God's anger. You are and always will be the object of God's grace and love. Now, when Jesus said to that man, your sins are forgiven you, the religious leaders were flummoxed and upset. Because they rightly believed that God and only God can forgive sins. And now here Jesus is taking on the role of God. That was blasphemy. They believed that God was a forgiving God. But in order for God to forgive people, they had to go through a scheme that included repentance and sacrifices. And until you re-earned God's forgiveness, you couldn't have it. And so what Jesus does is he wants to change their assumption as well. And so not only has he changed the assumption about that man who was paralyzed and say, no, God isn't angry at you, God loves you. So now he wants to change this assumption that we have to earn God's forgiveness. And so he says to the religious leaders, so that you understand that I have the power and authority to forgive sins, dot, dot, dot. And then he says to the man who is paralyzed on the mat, friend, get up, take your mat and go home. And so by healing that man in that moment, Jesus was demonstrating that he has the power to forgive sins. He's, that man is a walking example of it. And what Jesus wants to say in that moment is that God's forgiveness is not dependent on anything that we do. We can't be good enough for it. We can't earn it. We, there aren't schemes that we can follow. God forgives us freely through his unconditional love through his son, Jesus. Now, here we are in 2022, and we still fall into those old assumptions. Something goes wrong in our life. We hit a rough patch. Maybe a loved one, we, we lose a loved one, or we lose a job, or we lose our health. And we begin to wonder, is God angry at me? Did I do something wrong? Is God punishing me? And there have been a number of people who have actually turned their backs on God because that's what they believe, that God is punishing them. They don't want anything to do with that kind of God. And in this story, Jesus changes our assumptions. And he says, first of all, that God is not angry at you. You are not the object of God's wrath. You are always and only the object of God's love. And there is nothing that you can do to earn God's forgiveness because he gives it to you freely all the time through Jesus. It's already yours. You are forgiven. And so the cross of Jesus stands as the guarantee of these new assumptions. You are the object of God's grace. You are the object of God's forgiveness. And so Jesus comes to you with a radical invitation. He says to you, go bold, live grace, Get used to different. You are the object of God's grace. You are the one who God forgives. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the gospel, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to welcome you once again to the worship of Community of Grace here online. We're so glad to have you with us, joining us on Facebook and on YouTube. And uh, if you want to say hi, uh, want to check in with us, you can do that in the comment section. Uh, We'd love to hear where you're watching from. Uh, We'd love to pray for you if you've got a prayer request. If you're joining us for the first time, and uh, uh, this is the, the first time you've had any exposure to Community of Grace, we would love to send you a gift. And that gift is a card to Starbucks. And so if you text the word NEW to 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484, send the word, text the word NEW, we're going to follow up, we'll send you to Starbucks. If you text the word PRAYER to that same number, we're going to pray for you. We have a number of people in our church who pray for you. That goes out to our prayer team, it goes out to your staff, and we will pray for you. 
And then uh, as we move into the Easter season, if you want to keep up to speed with what's happening here online and in-house as we get ready to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus in a few weeks, text the word events, 623-295-2484. That's also the same number that you can use to support this mission and ministry. Uh, We're able to come to you online because of the generosity of people like you. Uh, We're able to do in-house ministry. We're able to do youth ministry. We're able to do ministry to uh, parents and to uh, young adults. And we're able to do ministry to uh, our seniors. Uh, Every age group is covered because of your generosity. And then we're able to reach out to to the community, out into the community, out into the world through your giving. So if you'd like to text a gift, you can put in the amount you'd like to give and send it to 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484. You can hold your camera up to the QR code there using your phone. Or you can go to boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving, boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving, and you'll find more ways to support this mission and ministry. So we're going to celebrate communion here in just a moment. Before we do that, we're going to have the band come back, prepare our hearts for this gift of grace.
On the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink and said, This is my blood. It's been poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you eat the cracker, as you eat the piece of bread that you have, this is the body of Christ given for you. And then as you drink the grape juice or the wine, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Again, thanks for joining us for worship today. If you found the service inspirational or helpful uh, and you're watching especially by Facebook, just hit share after the service is over and share that onto your page. That way more people will have a chance to experience God's grace along with us. A couple things we want you to know coming up here soon. Uh, in two weeks, we're going to be celebrating our 17th anniversary. And uh, we've got some special things planned uh, in-house. We're going to have our ice cream truck available for that. But online as well, uh, we'll be celebrating with you. So we look forward to having you uh, with us for our 17th anniversary. Uh, and then next week, uh, we're going to continue our series and uh, let me just tease out a little story here for you to get you set for next week. Uh, some of you have heard this story before. It's about a pastor by the name of Tony Campolo. And he had a speaking engagement in Hawaii, and he's from the East Coast. And the time change was such that he woke up at about 3 o'clock in the morning. And so he thought, well, I'm not going to get back to sleep. He was a little hungry, so he went down to a little, what they used to call, greasy spoon restaurant. And it was open, and he was sitting down with a cup of coffee, and a group of women of the night came in, uh, women who made their living uh, on the streets. And uh, they were talking and, you know, just uh, getting a little bit of coffee. And one of them said, hey, tomorrow is my birthday. And they all laughed at her. And afterwards, the women left, went back to work, and Tony walked up to the person at the counter, and he said, do they come in the same time every day? He said, yep, they're always here right around 3, 3.30. He said, I've got an idea for a party. I'll finish the story next week when we talk about Jesus and the party, Luke chapter 5, and we hope to have you join us for that. So now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you, be gracious to you, and may the Lord always turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. My bad, Diane. Sorry about that. Have a good